So the Lord has laid very strongly and shown me things in regards to faith. Faith in Him. But the question is, I'm going to ask this of some of you, what is faith? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. There's five things to faith, and it's very beautiful, and it all ties into the New Testament. So faith means, and the Lord's humor is in this, because in the Latin, faith means fides. So those of you who have a dog, Fido. <laughs> so when the dog's a bee, you go, here, Fido, here, Fido. And what does it do? Come it hears you faith and it obeys. Amen? But I think it's very cute and very humorous, too, because the Lord made it to mean Fido in Latin in regards to faith. Amen? And then, to trust. Yes, he's trustworthy. Now think about that. Jesus is the very one who brought in the new covenant. This is why we trust in him. How are any of us here if he has not called each and every one of us? He has. He's the one. He's the one. Amen? That's why he said, go into all the world to the disciples and preach my gospel. Amen? Amen. And then, speaking of the gospel, that is how we are to persuade. Just what the Lord Jesus showed Pastor Jensen. And he said, what is your purpose? The Lord told Pastor Jensen, preach no different than what I taught the disciples. Preach my gospel. Amen? That Lord is how you purpose. persuade. Preach the gospel. And then, to conciliate. And the word conciliate means to draw or bring together. We're all separate, but we're here together as what? The church. And Jesus is the head over us. And he has brought us together. Amen? And then he's also united. Amen? And then it's also too. Jesus is the one that calls us. This is what the word conciliate means. To draw or bring together. To unite. To call. This is in regards to faith as well still. And then to believe. And then the big one. To obey. That's why it's very remarkable. In the Latin. Fides. Well guess what? When you talk to somebody what are you doing? Confiding in them. So this in regards to all of this think about that now in regards to the New Testament, to the Gospel. Jesus Christ, in whom we trust, we're to preach the Gospel, to persuade. And then he is the one that has brought us together, drawn us together, united us, and called us. But the thing is, he allowed us to bring us through some things that without him, Probably none of us would be here right now. Amen? That's the truth. None of us would. So the word conciliate is a very beautiful thing in regards to the New Testament, too. In regards to, and this is all what faith means. So let's open up in prayer here. Open your heart. Open your mind and your ears to hear what the Lord would say to each and every one this night. Thank you, Father. We are here, Father. Speak to us, O oh Father. Have your way in our hearts, Lord. Open our understanding. Prepare. Let us break up the foul ground of our hearts, God. To receive your word, God, that they may be take root and prosper, Lord. We pray, God, for your vessel, God, that you would use them to give you glory and to give you honor. To lift up the people of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated in Jesus' name. So let's take a look at that word conciliate just a little bit more in regards to the fact that it's to draw or bring together or to unite. And it's good for repetition, too. That's how the Lord does it. We may read a, the same scripture many, many times, but the Lord always brings you back to lead you into more of his truth to know him. Amen. So let's go to Romans. Chapter 8, verses 26 through 30. 
I'm going to be reading basically out of the Amplified. <clears throat> so too, the Holy Spirit, look at this, comes to our aid. And look what it does also. The Lord's Jesus' Spirit bears us up. And what? Amen. See, that's a beautiful part about Jesus being the head over the church. Is he has no weakness. So each and every one of us that he's created, that's part of his church, in an area where somebody else is stronger, we're weak over here, but then it's vice versa. But here's a beautiful part. Jesus being the head over the church has no weakness. So his strength runs through each and every one of us, and that's why we are never to think of ourselves more than we should above others, and especially in regards to our brothers and sisters. Because it is Jesus Christ working his good will through all of us. Amen? So let's keep going here. For we do not know what prayer to offer, nor how to offer it worthily as we ought. But the Spirit himself goes to meet our, and this is remarkable, goes to meet our supplication. So look at that. He does hear you. Amen? And pleads in our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. Now in verse 27. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what's in the mind of the Holy Spirit, what his intent is. Because the Spirit intercedes and pleads before God on whose behalf? The saints. Isn't that remarkable? According to and in harmony with whose will? God's. Amen? So right there. We are assured and know, now in verse 28, and this is the, this, pay very close attention here, because we are co-laborers and co-contributors with Christ. Pay very close attention here in verse 28. We are assured and know that God being a partner in their labor. Catch that? All things work together are in, and are fitting into a plan. His plan, amen? For good too, and for those who love God and are called according, and this is why he called us. Pay attention here, because this is all part of this. The word conciliate, to call. Are called according to his design and purpose. So we are co-laborers with Jesus. Because it said there, God being a partner in their labor. His church. It's very remarkable. This is why faith in Christ Jesus, which is the title of tonight's message, is so very important. We're co-laborers with him. This is why we are to be led of the Spirit and not of the flesh. Because if we're not led by the Spirit, the flesh makes a mess. Amen? So I don't have this up on the screen, but let's go to those of you that have your Bible with you. Let's go to Psalm 139, verses 1 through 5, in regards to what we just read. In verse 27, from before, this is a psalm of David. The Lord himself says, a man after his own heart. Amen? So look at this. And in Romans 8, 27, what we read there, now look what this says. In Psalm 139, verses 1 through 5. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understands my thoughts afar off. Thou compassed my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Look at how well the Lord, when he creates us, he knows what's in us. Amen? For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. So you know what? He knows what you're going to say before you say it. <laughs> Amen? Thou hast beset me behind, and this is so beautiful here. Thou hast set me, beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. So he's with you at all times. So when he's with you before you become his, how much more is he going to be with you now and assign even more angels to you than before? He's protecting you before, he become, before you become his. How much more now that you're his? Will he do so? Amen. This is why. Faith in him is so important. Yes. Amen? 
So let's continue now in Romans 8, verse 29. In this, pay very close attention here. We have not a single thing to offer the Lord Jesus Christ. None of us. Again, that's why we don't think high up more of ourselves than we should. This is really quite remarkable and beautiful of how much Jesus loves us. Think about that. Before the foundations of the world were, before anything was formed, anything created, as a spirit hovered over the face of the deep. Just watch how much now the Lord loves you. Amen? For those whom, it says he, Jesus foreknew, what did he do? Of whom he was aware. In what? In love beforehand. So before he's forming you in the womb, he already loved you. Beautiful. Amen? Amen? This is why faith in Christ Jesus is so very important, to know what it means. This world will never tell you you're worth, a, worth anything. Because you'll have another hoop to jump through. Always. And that's not a good kind of fight <laughs> Amen? He also destined from the beginning for ordaining them. So he knew you were going to become his. Amen? And then he also knows you're going to walk with him because you're going to follow him until the end. So it's very beautiful in regards to faith with this. To be molded. Then Now watch very careful here. This is why the Lord foreordained you, each and every one of us. To be molded into the image of his son and share inwardly. Did you catch that? Share inwardly. This isn't about outward appearances. There's some very nasty people in this world. Oh, they dress up in the nicest stuff, have all this stuff. They look fantastic and inward. Jesus talked about them then, that nation. Oh, they dressed real nice. But inwardly, what did the Lord say about them? The ravening wolves. Okay? So the thing is, is this is why the Lord foreordained you. To be molded into the image of his son and share inwardly his likeness. Okay? That's what Christ-like means. Amen? That he might become the firstborn among many brethren. Amen? Amen? <clears throat> So now in verse 30 it says, and, it's, and it said he knew us beforehand, loved us. Amen? We just read that, didn't we? And those whom he thus foreordained, he also called. Remember, this is what faith is. He's the one that calls. Because conciliate means to call also. Amen? But he's the one that is doing it all and has. And those whom he called, he also justified. To be justified means you're acquitted, made righteous, and then guess what? He put that, putting them into right standing with himself. Are you catching how much he loves you? And why having faith in him is so important? Amen? And those whom he justified, he also glorified, raising them to a heavenly dignity and condition or state of being. So, we are in the world, but what? Not of it, because he has raised us up to a heavenly dignity and condition or state of being. Amen? So that's just in regards to the word conciliate. So now let's look more in depth at faith. But we're going to look at Hebrews 11, verse 1, but we're going to look at it in two different ways, two different parts. So just the very first part says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So the Old Testament prophets, they came forth with a word. They came forth with a substance, talked about Christ coming. But they also told them as a nation in the Old Testament they needed to repent. So they came forth with a substance, with the word, amen? And who did they also talk about? The Messiah's coming. Things hoped for, Amen? So with that, just the faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Let's look at that first part in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. 
It says, for unto us a child is born. And that's exactly who the wise men went to see. Amen? By the star. <laughs> unto us a son is given. And here's the things hoped for. Jesus. Amen? And the government shall be upon his, you notice this now, catch this, shoulder. It does not say shoulders. It does not say plural. More than one. So I asked the Lord about this. Shoulder. What is on the other shoulder? Kingdom. Always oh, says his right hand about the power and the might. How powerful and mighty he is, right? And it was just very beautiful. So, shoulder, the government, his kingdom. Heaven, on the right shoulder. What do you suppose is on the left shoulder? The church, which he purchased. Amen? Amen. So something very beautiful to think about there. Because that is all in regards to faith. Amen. To trust, to persuade, conciliate, to believe, to obey. Amen? Amen. Let's continue now. In verse 7 of Isaiah 9. <clears throat> of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, and yes, Jesus is the Almighty God, but he's also about order. Amen? And to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. Amen? His is an everlasting kingdom. It's not going anywhere and nothing's going to destroy it because the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. This is why we are to walk by faith, not by sight. It's very easy in the nonsense that goes on, to look at things and go, oh, can't you see what's going on? Faith. Because what Jesus is doing, he doesn't have to tell us. But that's what's remarkable. He wants us to know him, the very one that makes it possible to have the victory in all areas. But he's also going to bring you through. Yeah, we're, we're to suffer for his namesake, but he's made a means of escape. He will not allow you to be tempted above what you are able he knows the heart. Didn't we just read that? Amen. Amen? In Psalm 139. So pay very close attention now. Because it says, The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So here we go. <laughs> Excuse me. In John 1.1, 1, 1, it says, and look at this. Talking about the zeal of the Lord of hosts in Isaiah 9, 7. John 1, 1 says, in the beginning. And Pastor Jensen has touched on this. In the beginning was the plan. Amen? Him bringing in the New Testament. Amen? Faith is talked about by Paul, by Peter, James, John, all of them. In the New Testament. Amen? It says, in the beginning, before all time, was the word. Well, there's the plan. Amen? Christ. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God himself. Did you catch that? Shows you that Jesus is God right there. It's very beautiful. In regard, when it talks about the zeal of the Lord of hosts, I just want to quick go to Isaiah 53 and verse 5. And just touch on the very part where it says the chastisement in regards to the zeal of the Lord of the hosts, okay? So listen very carefully here. In Isaiah 53, 5, it says, The chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him, the zeal of the Lord of hosts. The chastisement. Because there was a partition between the nation of Israel and the Gentiles. Amen? But he tore it down, didn't he? And that's what's remarkable about the veil that was rent in two. It was rent from what? Not from bottom to top, side to side. Top to bottom. Beautiful representation of him having all power in heaven and earth as he said himself. So that's part of, also, his zeal. 
of what he desired to do. It was needful for him. Amen? Amen. But he didn't go to nobody about counsel. It was all the, coun all the counsel according to his will. Amen? <clears throat> so this is about things hoped for. The Messiah would come. Amen? That's Isaiah. Let's continue in Isaiah, but let's go to chapter 53. Who has believed, trusted in, relied upon, and clung to our message of that which was revealed to us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been disclosed? For the servant of God grew up before him like a tender plant and like a root out of dry ground. Listen to this now. He has no form or comeliness. Royal, kingly, pomp. He did not look like somebody that was of a very high prestige, if you will. That we should look at him and know beauty, that we should desire him. And it's very beautiful when you read that. Think about that. He has glory, majesty, and what did he come as? A servant. That is a very powerful thing, too, he shows to each and every one of us that are part of his body. You, hey, he's our example. You remain humble also. Amen? Isaiah 53, 3 says, He was despised and, reje and rejected and forsaken by men, a man of sorrows and pains and acquainted with grief and sickness, and like one from whom men hid their faces, he was despised. We did not appreciate his worth or have any esteem for him. That's true. We just read that in verse 2. He had no royalty to him, no kingly pomp, no, no prestige. Surely he has borne our griefs, sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses, and carried our sorrows and pains of punishment. Yet we ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God as if with leprosy. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him. And this is the areas in us mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. You have got to believe Jesus for this. This is all a part with faith. And with the stripes that wounded him, what does it say? We are what? And what else? Made whole. No lack anywhere. Because there's things in our lives that have come about. Sometimes it's self-inflicted, but not always. And he wants to heal us. Mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. But to receive, you have to believe him for it already. Because what does it say? We are. Our, it says we are. That means it's done. You just have to believe Jesus for it to receive it. He's not sitting there like this going, come on, come on, come and get it. You go to reach for it and then whoosh. That's how mankind operates. All you got to do is this. All you got to do for this. And then you know, you're, just, you're skipping through all these hoops. That's why he tells us, do not put your trust in man. Right. Amen? Right. You put your trust in him. Amen? Amen. So let's continue now in verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And look what the Lord did. Has made to light upon him, upon Jesus, the guilt and iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, yet when he was afflicted, he was submissive and opened not his mouth. Look what happened in the Garden of Gethsemane. Judas comes, the whoever else. Jesus says, who is it you're looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. And all Jesus says is, I am he. I am he. Boom. That's right. They weren't real bright because they thought, oh, let's ask again. <laughs> but this is a thing. This is part of... He has all power. His word, we're told his words are powerful. I mean, I don't know about you, but if somebody said, I am he, and I flew back, I landed on my rear end, I'd be like, I'd be like, don't you even ask him again. Did you not just see? We got knocked on our keisters, and all of a sudden, all he said was, I am he. This is why he was silent. Because it's also, too, he says, if my kingdom was here, my servants would fight for me. 
to Pilate. And that's why he also says, I am from above. You are from beneath. Amen. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, here it is, so you open not his mouth. Amen. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation, notice that, his generation, who among them, and this is a the thing, they did not realize that the Messiah was going to suffer. Now pay a very close attention here. To add up, as for his generation, who among them considered that he was cut off? That right there shows. They didn't realize he was going to suffer. Because at one point, the disciples asked Jesus a question. When are you going to restore the kingdom back, naturally, yeah. the land, to Israel? Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Amen. So, right there, something very powerful there in verse 8. Among them consider that he was cut, out, cut off out of the land of the living, stricken to his death, for the transgression of my Isaiah's people, says his generation, to whom the stroke was due. It was... They were supposed to receive the punishment, yeah. but instead he would come you, to take it. Right. Not just for them, but for us, for his church. And the church is made up of believing Jew and believing Gentile in what Jesus said, go into all the world and preach my gospel. That's, right. That's what the church is actually made up of. Amen? So let's continue now. In verse 9, and they assign him a grave with the wicked. Here's something else too. So after Jesus dies on the cross, Joseph of Arimathea comes to request the body of Jesus. Now you've got to pay attention here. He was a rich man. Okay? So this is talking about Joseph of Arimathea. Watch this now. With the wicked and with a rich man. When? And when did Joseph ask for the body? After Christ had died on the cross. It was also, too, that it was not supposed to be a body left hanging on that particular day. Amen? Yeah. So, just very powerful, the word of the Lord is, in the revelation. And this is why, as we're reading here, this is why the faith is so important. Because how did we get persuaded? We heard the gospel at some point. And it didn't always just click. And the light went on, if you will. But here we are. Amen? Although he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Now in verse 10 it says, Yet it was what? What did we read earlier? The zeal of the Lord of hosts shall perform this. Amen? Amen? Yet it was the will of the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief and made him sick. When you and he make his life an offering for sin, and he has risen from the dead in time to come. There it is. He shall see what kind of offspring? Spiritual. Spiritual. And here we are. Amen? Isn't that beautiful? He shall prolong his days in the will, in the pleasure of the Lord, in his hand. And look at that. The will. In this very same verse, it says, yet it was the will of the Lord. We read all that. And the will and pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Amen? Kingdoms on the increase. The church is on the increase. The true church. Not the worldly, fleshly presentation of what's the church. The true church. Because in the Old Testament too, it talks about if the Lord had not left us a remnant in regards to the nation, we would have been like Sodom and Gomorrah. And it's really quite remarkable because the Lord's remnant, his church, is in the world. He will plant. It says, because one reaps, one sows, but God or Jesus gives the increase. Amen? Because the comforter. Amen? Because we all have times where we're not at our best. But the Lord is not looking for us to be at our best. He's not looking for us to have it all together. But he is looking for us to know him. Otherwise, what did he go to the cross for? Belief is so important as a part of faith, along with the rest of it. Do you truly trust him? 
You have to. What's the world got to give to you but hell, death, and the grave? That's it. I mean, is it, 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 I mean, do you see in the spirit? And I said, oh, isn't that lovely? Look at all those beautiful U-Hauls they've got following them as they go. No, you never see that. You don't see any hearses, any uh, U-Hauls behind hearses, do you? <laughs> never. Because it's he who you will see. Amen? And then it says here in verse 10, He shall prolong his days, and the will and pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Now in verse 11 it says, He shall see what? The fruit of the travail of his soul, and be satisfied by his knowledge of himself, which he possesses in parts to others. Pastor Jensen was just talking about the whole Bible is about wisdom and love, which Jesus is. Amen? Oh, look at that. Which he possesses. Knowledge of himself. We're his church. He wants us to know him. Knowledge of himself. And what's he do? Imparts it to others. But how? By the word. Amen? <coughs> Shall my uncompromisingly righteous one, my servant, we just read that a little bit ago, he just has justified us, has he not? In Romans 8. Justify many. And make many righteous, upright, and right standing with God. For he shall bear their iniquities and their guilt with the consequences, says the Lord. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great kings and rulers, and he shall divide the spoil with the mighty, because he poured out his life unto death. And now here's the thing. Pay close attention. And he let himself, okay, be regarded as a criminal and be numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore and took away the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors, the rebellious. Jesus went to his own first, the nation. They rejected him. But then he went forth to the Gentiles after that and sent the disciples who were then apostles. Amen? With the gospel. Because he wants all from least to greatest to know him. But it's according to the gospel. Have you ever noticed when you read the New Testament that the many wonders, signs, and miracles were always confirmed by the Lord after the gospel was preached? Amen? Yes, Jesus did other things. But when the really big stuff happened, it was always a gospel preached first, and then the Lord confirming that what? Oh, the apostles were co-laborers with him. Amen? Because they were sowing, reaping, but Jesus was given the increase. Amen? So let's continue now. So here we have the substance of things hoped for. Isaiah 9, 6, and 7, and then all of chapter Isaiah 53. Substance. Messiah would come, would suffer, the word going forth. They were called to repentance. Amen? So now, let's look at that second part in Hebrews 11, verse 1. The second part. Here we go now. The evidence of things not seen. They talked about it. But the Messiah hadn't manifested in the flesh yet, had he? So let's see what John, one of the apostles, has to write in regards to this. Amen? So in John chapter 1, verse 14, it says, And the word Christ became what? Flesh. Human incarnate. Oh, look at that. Of things not seen. <laughs> fixed his tent. Tabernacle fixed his tent of flesh. Lived a while among us. And we actually saw his glory, his honor, his majesty. Majesty. And what did we read in Isaiah 53? He had no kingly pomp. No royalty to him. Amen? Such glory as an only begotten son receives from his father, full of grace, Favor, loving kindness, and truth. 
That's why we trust him. Amen? So there's the evidence of things not seen. The whole Old Testament. When the apostles, or not the apostles, yeah, the Old Testament prophets came forth. They had the Holy Spirit in them. If you read chapter 10 of 1 Peter 1, it says, the Holy Spirit which was in them. Amen? Talking about that. So there's the evidence of things not seen. And this is John, whom Jesus loved. Amen? So there's the evidence. First-hand account. <laughs> Amen? So again, this is why faith. We trust him. We believe him. Because he made it possible to be part of his kingdom and part of his body. This is why faith is so important in Christ Jesus. Amen? So let's continue now in James chapter 1, verse 3. Be assured and understand that the trial and proving of your faith brings out endurance, steadfastness, and patience. Because if we're told we're running a race, right? Sounds like we need all that, don't we? Yeah. Endurance, steadfastness, and I don't know about you, every one of us, we need patience. Oh, yeah. Amen? And he will grant unto us his patience. How patience, patient has he been with every single one of us? Oh, yeah. Amen? Yeah. Now look at this, what it says in regards to what we just read about proving of your faith, bringing out endurance, steadfastness, and patience. Now look what happens. But let endurance, steadfastness, and patience have full play and do a thorough work so that you may be what? People. Perfectly and fully developed with no defects lacking in nothing. This is why we get led by the Holy Spirit because guess what? Last I checked, Jesus lacks in nothing. And he has to perfect us perfecting of your faith, Amen. which is what we're reading about right now. Because he wants to make us strong by his strength. Nothing of ourselves. That's right. Nothing of ourselves. It's like the song we're saying, the more I find you. Right there. Amen? The more. So in verse 5 it says, and this is very important. Pay very close attention here now in verses 5 and 6 because there is a key in this. We're told, you know, asking in faith. But don't ask amiss so that you may fulfill it on the lusts of your flesh. They so were talking to them then but, that, then, but it doesn't change to the here and now that we're in. Amen? So just pay very close attention here because there's a key in this in regards to with faith. So look at this. If any of you is deficient in what? Who are you supposed to ask? God. Oh, just God or is he alive? Can't ask me, it's dead. Living God, amen? So with that, I'm just going to touch on the next verse in 6 in regards to this. So, we're all deficient in wisdom. We, sure are. we have to ask Jesus. Yes. How are you going to know anything in his word, the deeper hidden things of him, if you don't ask him, amen? It's a book of wisdom too, amen? amen. So this is how you're supposed to ask. In verse 6 it says, only it must be in faith. That's the key. That's how you ask. Why would you ask if, well, yeah. You ask in faith. Believing. Amen? And thank the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Because he'll bring you back to something you've read a thousand times in Scripture, and all of a sudden it's just, and the light goes on. It's like, wow. Because now he's showing more of who he is. And lead you on the good path. When he gives you revelation and understanding his word, is there any better or good path than that? None. none. None at all. So, who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without reproaching or fault finding? And it will. It will. Did you catch that? It will be given him. Amen? There you go. Asking in faith. He's already ready to give it to you. That's why you believe him. That's why you trust him. And when he commands you to do something, you do it. 
Like hey, right now, I got a, I got. I got a I got a lunch date at like 12 o'clock today, Jesus, and then all oh, about mm, I'd say about three, you know, and it's like, Lord doesn't need to hear our itineraries. Amen. So be it. He commands. So be it. Amen. Amen. So now in verse six it says only it must be in faith that he asks with no wavering, no hesitating, no doubting. If you don't doubt. Then you believe in. Amen? In belief, there is no doubt. It should be a foreign thing, like not even a consideration. Amen? For the one who wavers, hesitates, and doubt, doubts is like the billowing surge out at sea that is blown hither and thither and tossed by the wind. Look at, look at the association that the Lord gives to help us to understand how dangerous it is. And then all the more, for truly... Because what did it say? When well, we're supposed to ask, you know, for deficient in wisdom, we're to ask of Jesus. Yeah. We're to ask him in faith, right? Yeah. So guess what? Now you get the answer of what happens if you don't believe him, trust him, and ask in faith. Because verse 7 gives you the answer. For truly, let not such a person imagine that he will receive anything he asks for from the Lord. That's how important to ask in faith it is. A lot of times you think, oh, yeah, I'm asking in faith, and then the Lord's going, uh, no, actually you're asking amiss right now because you're not asking in faith. Amen? Now in verses 8 and 9, look at this. For being as he is a man of two minds, hesitating, dubious, and irresolute, he is unstable and unreliable and uncertain about everything. He thinks, feels, and decides. And that should never be the case, being double-minded with the Lord. This is why faith in him is so important. Amen? Now, here's the thing. Not to think of ourselves more than we should in regards especially to our brothers and sisters. Amen? He's the head over the church. He's the one in regards to your brother and your sister. The Lord doesn't care about tenor or any of that. He cares about how much of his word has increased because he will cause faith in him to increase. He'll show you things that you can't go to any so-called university and college that they could ever show you. What says one better than one day in your house and a thousand elsewhere? He can show you in one hour something that they couldn't show you in a thousand years. This is all the things with faith. That's why he says, seek my faith, my face, not my hand. Too many people walking around like, hey, 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 thank you, Jesus. And that's now what he's looking for. Nope. Amen? So now listen very carefully here. In verse 9, let the brother in humble circumstances, and there was no royal palm, you know, nothing of royalty, right? Jesus humbled himself down, so look what it tells us. Let the brother in what? Humble circumstances. Glory in his elevation. We're still in the world, but guess what? We're not of it anymore. Elevation. Going up into the high places, right? Amen. As a Christian, called to the true riches, look at this, and to be an heir of Christ, of Jesus, amen, of God. Amen. amen. So let's continue now. In Romans 3, verses 3 and 4 to start with. So now here's a question. What if some did not believe and were without faith? Does their lack of faith and their faithlessness nullify and make ineffective and void? And how many times has Pastor Jensen said, the Lord does not do anything outside of his word? Here we go now. Pay, pay attention to what it says at the end of this. There's a lot of great things in this. And void the faithfulness of God and his fidelity to his word? Right there. That tells you he doesn't do anything outside of his word. Fidelity, loyalty to his word. Amen? So here's the answer in verse 4. By no means. Let God be found true, though every human being is false and a liar. Isn't that remarkable? As it is written that you may be justified and shown to be upright in what you say 
and prevail when you are judged by sinful men. And that, at that time was what was going on at the church at Rome. Sinful men persecuting and killing the Christians, the church. Amen? But they still prayed, gathered together, because the gospel could not be stopped. Because by then, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, had been given, and the gospel was going out. I mean, the apostles were told, don't you say that name, Jesus. That's why Jesus' name is powerful. Why would you say something like that? That name? Yeah. And they continued. So let's continue now. In verse, now we're going to go to verses 20 through 30. In Romans 3, we're just staying in Romans 3. There, verse 31 also. So in verse 20 it says, For no person will be justified, made righteous, acquitted, and judged acceptable in his sight by observing the works prescribed by the law. For the real function of the law, now listen to this very carefully, is to make men recognize and be conscious of sin, not mere perception, but in an acquaintance with sin, and look what it works towards, repentance, faith, and holy character. Amen? He's creating the likeness of himself in each and every one of us, inwardly. Amen? What we read earlier. Now in verse 21 it says, But now the righteousness of God has been revealed independently and altogether apart from the law, although it actually is attested by the law and the prophets. And, and Christ himself fulfilled all the law, did he not? Amen? In verse 22 it says, Namely, the righteousness of God. Now pay attention here, because this really is emphasizing in regards to how important faith it really is. By believing, there's a part of faith. Trusting, it says, with personal trust. And confident, if you trust in something, how much more should you in Christ Jesus? Because then you have a confident reliance. But it's on Jesus Christ. And it is meant for all who believe. In just this verse, three parts of faith are touched on here. Believing personal trust, believe. Two, actually, excuse me. For there is no distinction. Just look at that. Believing and trust. Yeah. And the very first thing with faith is to trust. Where were you when you first believed? Amen? Everybody remembers. Pastor Jensen remembers it like yesterday. Amen? And the Lord makes that imprinted in here to remind us how much he loved us. Loved us beforehand. Knew us beforehand. <laughs> Before our grandparents, great-grandparents, and so on and so forth. And he already had us designated like we read earlier. Those whom he knew, he predestinated. Yeah. Hmm. That's remarkable. That's why we have faith in him. Amen? Now in verse 23 it says, Since all have sinned and are falling short of the honor and glory which God bestows and receives. All are justified and made upright in right standing with God freely and gratuitously by his grace. Notice how this all comes from him? Amen? What a plan. His unmerited favor and mercy through the redemption which is provided by who? Amen. Amen. Whom God put forward before the eyes of all as a mercy seat and propitiation by his blood. The cleansing and life-giving sacrifice of atonement and reconciliation. But how is it received? Through faith. Amen. Notice that? Through faith. To trust. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over and ignored former sins without punishment. In the Old Testament, what happened? Oh, they took Jericho, no problem. And then, yeah, several thousands, they go to AI. 
but they don't have the Lord with them. And then you have Achan, who hides it in his tent. And this is one of those times where there was punishment immediately. Yes. Lord Jesus was ready to give them the treasures that were there, but because of him. And this is why walking by faith is so very important because of the fact that in the Old Testament what happened? Because of one man doing this, the whole entire camp was held accountable because of one person. We have a better covenant, better promises, and this is why faith is the New Testament. When you think about that from earlier, to trust, to persuade. What are you persuading people with? What the fake phoniness that has been presented is, oh, it's everything but the gospel, right. which it's not. It is the gospel that is preached. That's how you are to persuade. It hasn't changed. And then they conciliate. Jesus is the one that has made it whole, his church. And then believing and receiving. And then to obey. Because the biggest thing is, how much? Do you have faith in Christ? He loves you, gave himself for you. And yes, there's things that need to be addressed, things like that, but a lot of times the church itself gets too busy in building its own kingdom sometimes. It's his kingdom. We're co-laborers with him. The Lord is not interested in your itinerary. He wants you to know him. Amen. Now in verse 20, 26, a few more verses here in closing. It was to demonstrate and prove at the present time in the now season that he himself is righteous and that he justifies and accepts as righteous him who has what? And who? There you go. Amen. Then what becomes of our pride and our boasting? Here you go. This is to us as the church. Every single one of us here. It is excluded, banished, and ruled out entirely. Amen? Our boast is supposed to be in Jesus, in the Lord. Amen? On what principle? On the principle of doing good deeds? No, but on what principle? Amen. This is how important this is to our Lord Jesus Christ and why he is speaking on this this evening to all of us. Amen? Now verse 28 says, For we hold that a man is justified, and who justifies us? Jesus. And made upright by what? Faith. Independent and distinctly apart from good deeds. Works of the law. The observance of the law has nothing to do with justification. Now here it is. This is how beautiful the plan of the Lord was after he died and rose again on the third day. Now, the church. Or is God merely the God of Jews? Is he not the God of Gentiles also? Yes, of Gentiles also. Since it is one in the same God who will justify the circumcised by faith, which germinated from Abraham, and the uncircumcised through their newly acquired faith, for it is the same trusting faith. Can you catch that? Trusting faith in both cases. A firmly relying faith in who? Amen. Amen. Do we then by this faith make the law of no effect, overthrow it, or make it a dead letter? Certainly not. On the contrary, we confirm and establish and uphold the law. And now, last verse in closing, verse Peter 1, verse 2 says, and this goes back to what we read earlier in Romans 8, 29 and 30, amen? And Pastor Jensen's talked about this. We don't have to interpret the Bible. 
the apostles did it already. Amen? So here's what it says. Who were chosen and foreknown by God the Father and consecrated, sanctified, and made holy by the Spirit. Amen? Now here's the thing. you got to catch us in closing here. You ever wondered why does he give you his Holy Spirit? Yeah, it's to lead you into all truth, to be the comforter. But there's a key in this. Pay very close attention to you. It says, by the Spirit, and this is why, to be obedient to who? Jesus Christ. And to be sprinkled with his blood. Do you realize that spiritually? That's what he does to sanctify you, to consecrate you, to make you holy. What it says here, to be sprinkled with his blood. And that's why Jesus, when the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary, and then she was found with a child is given, a son is born, like we read in verses nine, 6 and 7 of Isaiah 9. Because if Jesus had been born, like every single one of us here has been, then he would have been born with sin, and his blood would not have been sinless. But because he was put in the womb that way, he then was born without sin. That's why we read that his blood was sinless. Perfect sacrifice. That's why he entered into the Holy of Holies one time into heaven itself for us. That's why he's the high priest. Amen. May grace, spiritual blessing, and peace be given you in increasing abundance. Look what the Lord wants to do. Amen. That spiritual peace to be realized in and through who? Christ. And this is the freedom. The spiritual peace he's talking about. Freedom from fears, agitating passions, and moral conflicts. It's just one more time here. To trust, to persuade, conciliate. Which means he just unified that which was a part. Amen? To believe and to obey. The Lord wants to increase what you've heard tonight in you and to give us all an understanding. Because a lot of times, when in regards to faith, a lot of times you'll hear believe. But how much more wonderful it is when the Lord brings forth his word to help us all to understand why the faith in him is so very important. Come forth, Pastor Jensen. faith that he is talking about is a faith that our Lord Jesus Christ established under the new covenant. That is what true faith that he established covenant by his death, burial, and resurrection. And that's why this is the gospel. And you must have faith in the gospel and the word that is preached to you of the gospel itself. And then obedience and everything he mentioned. We must be persuaded Hallelujah and obedient to the gospel of our Lord. I want to thank you again, brother. Amen. I want to thank everyone that came.